Hi everyone, it's Mary Schumann, realtor in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and every week I do videos about all things real estate and life in the Twin Cities. And today is the third in my three-part series about how to buy your very first home ever. So if this is your first time stopping by my channel, I encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell next to it, and you'll be notified every time I post a new video. If you're interested in downloading my free first time home buyer's guide, you can get that in the description below this video. All you have to do if you're on a mobile device is go ahead and click the title of this video and the description box will display and you can go ahead and download it there. All right, last steps. So we ended the last video, you had put in an offer and we're going to assume that now you have one that's been accepted, even if it wasn't your very first offer. So what comes next after that is that you'll be giving something called earnest money. And I did a video on earnest money as well, so you can check that out. I'll link to it above. Earnest money is really just you putting a little bit of skin into the game so that the seller knows that you are serious and you have something to lose should you decide to try and skip out on the contract. It kind of holds all the parties accountable to make sure that you meet the deadlines um, outlined in the contract and that the contract continues to go forward in the timeline that you've agreed to. So once your offer is accepted and you've given your earnest money and that's held by a trust account, um, not the seller and not me and not the seller's agent, um, number one is the inspection period. Typically that's about 10 days and it really is in your best interest to get an inspection done on, on a home that you're buying. Uh, you might walk into a house and think it looks awesome because it has granite countertops and stainless steel appliances and beautiful hardwood floors. But what you really want is someone that's gonna crawl around up in the attic, see if there's any kind of moisture problems, make sure that you have insulation, that there's no problems with your roof, electrical, all those foundational elements that you don't want to um, buy a problem with. So what's great about that is once you have that inspection, you kind of enter into a, a bit more negotiation with the seller. And what that means is you can ask them to do a couple of things. Come down on the price to make up for the fact that you'll have to fix those things and then you fix them yourself. You can decide that you don't want to do anything with this at all and you can walk away from that contract and get your money back. Or you can ask for the seller to repair those items and give you proof that those had been repaired um, to the correct standards. So those are some options. And as part of that inspection period, you'll also want to do a couple of things. Um, I live in Minneapolis, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and it's an old city. There are a lot of old trees and clay sewer lines. I always recommend that you go ahead and get a sewer line inspection as well because a sewer line backup um, I did another video on this, but it is not something you want to experience. Typically, the homeowner's responsibility is to replace the line from the home out to the street. And you might think, how much could that possibly be? Well, it could be a lot of money, like $10,000. So um, you want to make sure that you're buying a home that does not have that tree root damage potentially or broken clay pipes. You should think about also looking for a company that offers a sewer line replacement rider. If you live in an older neighborhood, if there's a lot of old trees around, if it's something that you might be concerned about. So just a tip. Two other things that are gonna happen at the same time um, or begin at the same time are one, your loan is going to head into the more serious phase of actual approval. They're gonna be asking you for all kinds of documentation looking at your credit report, asking you to explain anything that's out there that's not cleared up, um, provide proof of income, and all of those types of things. So your loan officer is going to be in contact with you a lot as he gathers documents, and it's to your advantage to respond to these quickly so that you are never in breach of contract and able to meet the timelines. Another part of financing is that the bank will send out an appraiser. That appraiser is going to look at the home and evaluate it, um, looking at comps and recently sold homes. They're gonna look at everything in the neighborhood and determine if the home is worth the amount that you've agreed to pay for it. That's really important to a bank. They don't wanna end up with um, an asset on their books that they can't sell for the amount to cover the loan should you ever default. So if your home or the one that you choose doesn't meet the appraised value that you hope to, um, a couple things can happen. One is you could ask the seller to renegotiate the price. You could walk away. 
Sometimes it actually appraises for higher than that value and then you essentially have equity in the home before you even moved into it. So um, that's a great place to be. Guarding the loan. We have something called the 10 commandments in real estate. I shouldn't even mention it because I'm not going to give you all 10. But they boil down to this. Don't open new bank accounts. Don't close bank accounts. Don't put in a bunch of new money into your account unless it's easily explainable. Don't buy large purchases on credit. Don't do anything that's gonna upset the apple cart in your loan process. You really want to have a stable and outflow of income, nothing that's gonna mess with your credit between the time that you put that offer on the house and your loan process begins until you walk away with keys. Once you have those keys, if you wanna buy all new furniture and a brand new car to put in the garage, go ahead and do it. But up until then, you know, just dream about it, okay? <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, a couple more steps. One is right before close, usually the morning of or the night before, you're gonna do something called a walkthrough. And you'll take a look at the house and make sure that it's in the condition that you expect it to be in, that they've left the appliances that you said they should leave, the light fixtures, the walls are in good condition. There's nothing really that's standing out as a problem. So you'll feel like, yes, what we've agreed to buy, we're buying, and it's all in good shape, and here we go. You're gonna go to closing, and before you get to closing, you'll hear from your loan officer what you need to bring to the penny financially. To, they'll tell you how they expect you to do it as well. Often it's just an electronic transfer, so you'll have that money in the bank and you can just do it that way. So have your um, hand rested up and ready to sign and have your money ready to go. Then if you're in Minnesota, you're gonna walk out of there with keys. It's not like that in every state, but here you take possession immediately unless some, for some reason you've agreed to rent it back or something like that. Um, but you're home. Before thing you should do, before you do anything else, is submit your homestead exemption to the tax people. This is a big deal. I think, you know, we get several hundred dollars back every summer because of our homestead exemption. And what this means is you're essentially getting a lower tax rate by residing in the home. So if you are residing in that home, make sure you get your homestead tax exemption filed ASAP short videos and now you know it all so you're ready to buy your first home. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and please let me know if you have any questions or comments.